Why is the risk of a strike so high right now? What are the conditions that may be setting it up where we might see workers go off the job? Uh, these are a critical set of negotiations. It's defining for the company. They want to compete in, a, in an industry that's going through a transformation with electrics and, and autonomous vehicles. For the union, it is equally pivotal. They want to see that, but they want to ensure their members have job security and that they share in those gains. So their demands are higher wages uh, and some broad changes in the various uh, classifications of workers. There are many temporary workers. There are those hired since 2007 that earn far less. They were far apart when these negotiations started. We're in the end game now, and it's really about how U.S. manufacturing competes in the global economy. Professor Sheik and I come from far afield in the UK where well, strike action is really quite common to a certain extent and British Airways are busy at it as I speak. How monumental is this to see it in the United States, see it in the auto sector and potentially therefore see it spread across from just GM? Uh, this is something that has become increasingly rare in the United States. In the last several years, we've had an uptick in strikes, but way beyond what it was, say, in the 70s or even into the 80s. In the auto industry, the last major strike at General Motors took place in 1998, uh, and that turned out to be very disruptive. So these things are rare, but these issues are pivotal. You've We've got a lot of workers who gave major concessions when GM went bankrupt and the industry virtually collapsed a decade or so ago. They've regained some of it, but they want to regain more and they want a sense that they're stakeholders and sharing in the gains rather than potentially the victims of a more competitive GM. So, Professor, I understand the idea of them wanting a little bit more of a share uh, of, of uh, sort of the regress that GM has gotten uh, over the last couple of years, but at the same time, uh, there's talks about uh, job security, there's talks about keeping specific plants open, when a lot of the sort of benefits, I guess, that GM has gotten over the last couple of years has been the flexibility to shut down plants like the one in Lordstown and to walk away from some other projects. If they don't have that flexibility, does it get to a stage where then the profitability and, and of course what the union was sharing then is a sort of put at risk? Of course that is a risk and the flexibility is critical and I think the union realizes that. Something else is going on here though. It isn't simply flexibility or a few so slow selling models. It is major outsourcing. GM remains the largest seller of light vehicles in the U.S. and now has slipped to the third largest employer when for decades it was the largest. At the same time, it has become the largest exporter of light vehicles, pickup trucks, uh, SUVs from Mexico to the United States and Canada. And I think it is that that has workers deeply disturbed. It isn't a question of a transforming industry. It is a question of auto workers earning two to three dollars an hour in Mexico, far less than what they earn in the United States. I'm curious if you look historically what the connection is between incidences of a strike and tight labor markets because the last brief strike 2007 really things were still good then before the bottom fell out of the economy and of course in 1998 the economy overall was red hot now we have a uh, unemployment rate at 3.7 percent are these the type of things that you consistently see when workers feel that Look, the job market is not that terrible out there, and they really feel that the economic conditions give them some leverage and bargaining power. Oh, I think there's some truth to that, and, and it's actually true. Uh, the economic conditions of tight labor market, an economy that's moving along, give workers confidence. But I think there is a great desire on both sides of the bargaining table in Detroit to avoid a strike. For General Motors, it would be very disruptive, unclear if all those sales would be regained. For the UAW and its members, it's costly, uh, and they want to see job security in a successful company. So both sides want to avoid a strike, but it's clear the possibility of a strike is much higher than in the recent past. And in fact, 
uh, the paradox here is the UAW's clear uh, showing that they are prepared to strike, not posturing, prepared right. to do it, might provoke a settlement more readily because both sides want to avoid that. 